Have you ever created a website where you needed to create a some sort of text editor or some way for a user to enter information in and you wanted it to be displayed and they needed to be able to edit it? You know, for example, like uh, a basic CRUD app that you're maybe creating like a blog, things like that. Well, one really nice tool I found recently is called TipTap. It's a renderless rich text editor for Vue.js. It has uh, tons of features. It can do tons of things. I think it's really neat. I want to show you what it can do, and then we'll actually jump to a little bit of code too. So make sure you stay all the way to the end, and let's begin. Hey, and if you don't know, my name is Eric. I'm a full stack software developer. I'm also the author of the, the Vue.js in action book, which you can find the link in the description below. So here, uh, I went ahead and opened up the website. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description below if you're interested. And it's called TipTap. They call it a renderless rich text editor for Vue.js. And it's based on ProseMirror, which is a fully extendable and render and which is fully extendable and renderless. I haven't used ProseMirror, but I uh, hear it is good. And you can create custom nodes and view components from it. So essentially, this is what it looks like. So I'll make this a little bit bigger. So you can create a text editor. And this right here is actually a text editor. So I can go high. You can see here's the bullet points. Here's all the icons that you can um, have at the top. So I can just highlight something. I don't know. I make See, this is already ita uh, italicized. But let's see. I take this, hit the I. So now I have it italicized. Um, I can also strike through, underline. Um, I think this can make it like a code block if I wanted to. I can start different paragraphs. I can have H1, H2 tags. Um, so this is kind of neat. You can set, you can, this is all customizable too. So you can create a really fully functional text editor inside Vue.js, which is uh, really cool. So you can actually do uh, um, columns or excuse me, bullet points or an item ordered lists, quotes, things like that too. So let's take a look at what else it can do. So this is like just the basic functionality of it. So you can also do something called menu bubbles. So if I highlight something like this, you see above, I can bold it, italicize it. I can also put like a little code block here. So this is called a menu bubble. I can have floating menus. And what that means is if I enter a new line, you can see I can type I can make my new line H1, and then it's H and H1 tag right here. I can create links pretty quickly. I just click the little add link. That can become a link. I can do something with images. So I can actually drag and drop images. So like here, here's the image on the side here. I can just drop it, and now it's at the top here. Heidi menu bar, click into the text to see the menu. So you see here, when I don't, I'm not clicking in this text box, I don't see the menu, but when I do, I do see the menu at the top. Even has like a built-in to-do list, um, which is cool if you're making like a to-do list app. You could just throw this in here, and they can you know really quickly make their own to-do lists, um, make check boxes, things like that. Tables. So tables come with some useful commands like adding, removing, or margining, uh, merging rows and columns. So you can create your own. Uh, it looks like it has all these tools at the top here to like create extra rows and delete rows and things like that. Suggestions. So sometimes useful to mention for someone. That's a feature we're very used to. So you can um, you try add, add a pop-up. Let's see here. So this, I haven't used this, but you can basically insert mentions of people. So, so I can do an insert message like this. Interesting. There's markdown shortcuts. So start a new line. Um, like this, if you don't know, if you know markdown, this is like H3, H2 tags. Um, I'm sure you can do lists like this. So it's like kind of built in markdown. That's really cool and easy to use. Code highlighting. So this is, yeah, you can, there's code blocks, automatic syntax highlight, bin and highlight JS. This is really neat. So. If you're doing uh, like a blog and you wanted to have really cool code highlighting, you can add this in here. History mode, you can 
type stuff in and then you can undo it or redo it, which is really neat. You can do read only. So this text is read only. You're not able to edit. So I can't edit it, but if I click editable, now I can edit it. You can embed, so you can embed YouTube videos. This iframe is rendered as a view component, which is really cool. You can do placeholder text. So if you type something in here, you see the placeholder. Um, it's kind of neat. Collaboration. With the collaboration extension, it's possible for several users to work on a document at the same time. To make this possible, client side service side code is rendered. I don't know how this works, but I guess you can have like eight users are connected right now. You can have everybody um, put something in there. Export ex HTML or JSON. You're able to export your data as HTML to JSON. To pass HTML to the editor, use the content slot. So this is kind of neat. You can kind of pass data back and forth, um, set content, clear content. I don't know. It's, I don't know. You m might be able to use this for some reason. Kind of setting content to H, um, importing and exporting to HTML or JSON. So that's that's essentially all the things it can do. So there's quite a few things. If you go to the GitHub, it kind of explains how to get started. So what I did here is I'll, I'll show you how easy it is. So I have a view project up and running right now. I just did uh, a view create. I created the project. It's I just I really didn't even change anything. I'm still using the hello world view, which is the basic component that comes to the view project. I have my I, I deleted out a couple of things in here. And then I decided inside this hell world view to um, add some buttons. So all I did was I, after I created the app, I did an npm install dash dash save tip tap extensions. You can see at the end bottom of the screen here, this is the first package or the second package you probably should install that adds some extensions so you can add links and to do items and create buttons. And then the other one you want to do is is install tip tap. So these are the only two packages I installed and I was up and running. And then when I serve it, I just, the only thing I added to this component was just a few things. So I have right here, I created this editor menu bar and this editor content. Now editor content is the box that you actually um, edit stuff on. And then the editor menu bar is the different bar menu bars that you can have. And that's when I showed you there's the floating bar, there was the um, the other different types of bars, which I'll show you guys in a second. And then I have these buttons. So you use this V slot, and this is how you get your commands in. And so is active is one of them. So this is the bold one, this is the underline one. And then you basically, this is commands is what initiates it. So you add a click handler that does commands.underline or commands.bold when it's clicked. And then I have some classes here that are just um, styling. Actually, I'm not using them. I kind of copied and pasted this from the examples. Uh, and then here's the editor content as well. And then to actually do what I needed to do, I took inside my script tag, I imported editor, editor content, editor menu bar, editor menu bubble. Um, and then I imported these different block quotes, code blocks in here from tip tap extensions. I just kind of copy and pasted them all in here. And then inside the components, this is where I put the components um, in there. Okay, and then in the data, this is how you create your, you can do this in the mounted hook or in the, just for the sake of this purpose of the demo, I'd put it in the return. And that creates this new editor. And I just added all the extensions in there the to-do item, to-do list, I'm only using bold and and underline right now, but I can use any of them. And then I just hard-coded the some content in here. And that's pretty much it. So once I did that, I got this example here. So I'll refresh it. So here is the editable like text window here. And um, if I, I can click on any of these, I can underline it. See, here's underline. I can bold it. Um, let's see here, I could take this and bold it if I wanted to. I think I can unbold it, yep, there. Um, here is 
Um, I can just type my own stuff in here. And if I wanted to, I can make that bold and underline. And so that works uh, as I expected. Oops, I actually copied that there. So that's essentially what it is. If I wanted, let's say I wanted to add another one. Um, so if I go back to my editor here, and let's say I wanted to add strike. Well, I can just kind of copy and paste this. I can add another button here. And make sure I close it. And then this time I'm gonna do, I'm gonna call this strike, strike. And it's gonna be is active, I believe it's called strike. And when you click on it, it's just gonna run strike. If I spell that, strike. So now I'm gonna come back here. Here's my strike. So if I highlight something and hit strike, it strikes it out as I expect it. And the reason this all works correctly too is because I have this extension. I have the strike extension down here that I'm importing in, otherwise it wouldn't work. So that's essentially how it works. Uh, it's really easy to use. You can see I just, in like 10 minutes, I just created this, copied and pasted some stuff together and created my own editable window. And uh, it works great. So I'd love to have your guy, guys' opinion, what you think about this in the description below. Let me know. Have you used something like this in the past? Do you think this is useful? Uh, I'd love to hear your opinions. Leave a comment below. Now I do have a little bit of housekeeping. From my last video I did on Gatsby, I, uh, by the way, make sure you always watch my videos at the end. I love to give away courses and this was no exception. So I did a review on a Gatsby course with WordPress, which I know is React, but I, I said I would give two people away a copy of the course. I actually talked to the creator and he gave me a couple of, a couple of free courses to give away. So I'm going to use this random comment picker and I'm going to pick, um, it says I have 11 unique comments. So I'm going to start the raffle. And we're gonna pick the first person who will win. And that is Emmer Hadizik. So I'm gonna look for Emmer. Here he is. So I'm gonna say, congrats, you won. Contact me at the email on my GitHub. And so let's see if he contacts me. And then we'll do one more. And our second winner of the free Gatsby React course uh, is Dr. Kors. Dr. Kors, Let's see if I can find him. Q U R. I'll refresh it. Oops. Let's see here. I'm gonna sort this by newest first. Kors, there he is. Um, congrats, you won. Contact me if you like a copy of the course, email me at the email on my GitHub. Okay, done and done. So now I have uh, two winners. Once again, if you guys like my videos, make sure you comment them. I'd love to give away free courses and I hope you found this interesting. Thanks, take care.